Well, the biggest infrastructure project in Montgomery County now and across Maryland is the expansion of the I-495 and the I-270, the I-495-270 program. Yes. How do you see that program? Advantages, disadvantages? Is that going to help us? Yes. Is it going to hinder economic growth in the Absolutely. long term? Absolutely. So let me take two steps back. And I think there is universal agreement in several areas. Number one, our traffic is getting worse. Undisputable. Uh, it, is, it is affecting quality of life. Uh, it is impacting our ability to bring in businesses, particularly up the I-270 corridor in, um, uh, in the Germantown and Rockville North and Clarksburg areas, uh, which have in their master plans the ability to build more businesses and have more infrastructure, but it just hasn't been able to catch. So that's one. Traffic is getting worse. Mm -hmm. The second indisputable fact is you can't, it's not, it's a, it's a false dichotomy to pit cars against mass transit. We need both. We need both. It's not one or the other. Um, the third issue that I think is indisputable is that we have a really unique opportunity right now, in part because of the pandemic, to think especially creatively in how we address the transportation challenges as a region, not just in Montgomery County, but as a region. So how do we do that? Um, now, I have been, at first, disappointed in the way that the governor's team rolled out this effort. There was a lot of miscommunication, a lot of mistrust that was built early on in the system. I remember attending one of the first sessions that the governor's team came to present to the community, and they had different diagrams of different options. One of the options, and I'm not making this up, was widen the lanes in 495 so that, but, but to do that, Holy Cross Hospital was going to have to be moved. That was one of the options. Oh. So immediately, people were like, are you kidding me? That's, that, how is that even going to be possible? And so that began to draw the lines and the opposition because of the misinformation and the lack of clarity and the mistrust that built through this process. I happen to think that there's a tremendous opportunity for us, particularly within 270, um, to, to widen the lanes responsibly. And I think we, we have to look at a solution that looks at widening lanes, but also creates specific lines for a mass transit option, which I think is going to be very important. Mm -hmm. 495 is more complicated because just the typography and uh, the, the, the issues with climate impact are real and something that we're going to have to further analyze. But I think that this can be phased in in a way that's responsible, that starts with 270, but goes further up 270 than the plan currently calls for, which basically almost ends at the Frederick Montgomery County line. It doesn't address the bottleneck that occurs on that line, and that has to be addressed or widening the lanes will make some improvement, but not make the full improvement that it should. But the other, I think, potential solution here, we need to extend the red line. <laughs> we need to extend the red line beyond Shady Grove, which Shady Grove is one of the top three most utilized metro stations in the entire system. And it's because of the demand from parts north of Shady Grove, which to me, demonstrates and dictates possibility for extension. And if you look at the Silver Line in Northern Virginia, very similar uh, in what's possible. So I think those are all things that, that need to be taken into account. So that was a very long-winded way of saying, <laughs> yes, um, it, it provides tremendous economic potential and it has to be done uh, because we, we our, our infrastructure desperately needs it.